that again. Um, welcome to our 10th live stream at the Christine Classen Gallery. I'm Christine and joining me today for a gallery or a, yeah, a gallery tour of his current show Avalon is Chris Kuzmanovich. Welcome Chris. Hi. Um, we're not wearing our, wearing our masks because um, we are going to distance, but we're not wearing our masks because obviously that'll just make for very muffled listening on your end. So um, We're not anti-mask. We're not anti-mask. We just want you to enjoy um, our live streams this evening. So once again, we're trying something, uh, well, it's the second time we've done this, where we're um, streaming both through Instagram and Facebook. So um, hi to everybody on both platforms who's joining us today. Um, we look forward to, you know, seeing your comments kind of roll in as they do. Um, and hopefully you're wearing your mask at home. Yeah, yeah. But also join us for a glass of wine. I mean, the whole idea of this is that it's a, it's a bit of a happy hour where we can kind of unwind um, on a Friday and, you know, you can take in some art and get to know one of our artists a little bit better. Um, in this case, we get to actually tour the show as well. So, so cheers to you um, and cheers to Chris. Cheers. And um, we'll get started. So I'll just do a little bit of an introduction um, of Chris. Chris is a Calgary-based creative, um, originally from the Northwest Territories, who began his um, began painting as a self-reflexive practice about 15 years ago, um, and also works as an interior designer with his firm CBK Projects. Um, this is his fourth show with us at the gallery, uh, and it's been quite exciting to see. Um, just how the work has progressed over the you know over these four shows, um, you know to this beautiful body of work, Avalon. Um, not going to get into Avalon yet because I do have a couple of questions about that. Well, I think I made a joke about it in one of the feeds. It's like why we all need to relocate to Avalon right now. Right. So. <laughs> right. Um, what else do I want to say? Oh, I do have some other live streams. Uh, booked for the next coming weeks. I know I pulled the trigger maybe a little too fast um, with Carl's tour saying that we were doing live streams every Friday again and then of course there were none. Uh, but admittedly we had some technical problems we're just still working out with trying to get, uh, you know, to be able to stream to both platforms honestly and Instagram unfortunately doesn't, isn't as easy as other uh, medias. But, um, you know, we're working out the kinks. So always, as always, thanks for your patience. And without further ado, I think this is probably a really good piece to start with um, uh, talking about because this was one of the one of the first pieces in the show, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Not the first, maybe the second. I or... think it was the second that okay. I that I did um, when starting the show. And as you stated uh, when we were talking a little bit before. It, there is a sort of a transitional sort of feel to this coming sort of from my last show. You know, when you're first starting off the, the, the show, you don't really, you know where you're going, but you, I don't know, I don't want to say you start safe. You just sort of start where you're comfortable, where you sort of know well, has to start where you're really good. Come from somewhere, yeah. right, too. And, uh, but as I was going through this, um, with my scratching and stuff, I started um, some portraiture. And so yeah, there's, a, there's a little bit of, of me and being inside my head that's sort of on, uh, sort of on the, the top of this. Um, and then uh, uh, many different um, sort of areas of, of feeling and um, different parts of my head and heart sort of are kind of represented sort of throughout. Well, and I guess the idea started kind of percolating yeah. for the show through, well, this, and there's another piece that we'll look at, which I think is actually the first piece that yes. started. But but I love that this kind of gives us a little bit of all the flavors of the show. We've got this, you know, change of palette. We have, um, you know, the, the introduce, introduction of some different types of, of sketching and drawing on the surface of the painting. I yeah. love that there is this self-portrait element in a couple of the paintings. Um, and of course, these different forms that emerge as well, like these, I mean, you can probably see it in the camera, but we have like some larger forms and shapes emerging in your paintings as yeah. well, which I really like. It's just, 
Like, yeah, I don't know. The plan is kind of been aligning for I know a lot of artists during Corona, um, you know, and I think, yeah. or this like hashtag art in time of Corona, and I think your this body of work for you is no exception. Is this an eyeball? I've never noticed this yes. before. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I just noticed that right now. I sit right across from this painting. Yeah. Um, I don't know what else I really want to ask. I guess why? Well, one thing I do want to ask about, I suppose, is is the portraiture because that the self portraiture is new. So why did you decide to include? Like, I mean, I know it was a personal body of work, but maybe you know, maybe our you know our uh, viewers don't. Well, it is. I think it is. I think whatever I do paint a show, I guess, like any artist. It, is uh, private, or not private, personal um, sort of inside scoop on yourself. Uh, this show for me was deeply personal. So I think that uh, right out of the gate, I wanted to um, really accentuate sort of how personal this was uh, by actually putting me. I mean, if you bought it, it could be you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not so defined, I suppose, but yeah. yes. Uh, so I, I just really wanted to sort of show uh, how personal that was, that it is me, it is my thoughts, it is my story. Right. Um, which, as we'll talk, you know, uh, more, it's, it still is universal, but they're really, I really wanted a feeling like you are really looking at or experiencing this guy, like this artist, you know, right well, up front. And admittedly, like the portrait is, like I wouldn't say it's happy. It's not. It's it's um. Thinking. It's definitely yes. I mean, you can't, you'll have to just come to the gallery and see it in person, folks. But um, which I didn't even get into. I guess we can wind up with that. I was going to talk about you know COVID, of course, because we are now down to 15 people. Um, we're That's still official open. now. Yes. Yeah, we snuck in with your opening. It happened, I think, on the Monday after. But all I have to say, we are open. You can come see the show, but it's only 15 people max allowed in at a time. But people are very, like, I invite you to also book a private um, gallery tour if you feel safer that way with, you know, myself, or we can, you know, even get Chris here. Like, he'd be happy to give you a private tour. Anyway, I've just recruited us for that, but I think. I, I mean, I think I some of these things we'll talk about, you might be able to see in the painting, but others, you know, you have to take our word for us and, and just come down and see the show. Um, okay, well, I don't know if I have an, so much more to say. We have a lot more to go to, but um, we'll, you know, we'll keep, keep moving. Or okay. is there anything else you want to share? No, I'm good with that. Okay. Yeah, introduction or piece. Okay, follow us. I should say we have, oh. Getting a little close ups. Good. Hi again. <laughs> and a big thank you to, to Candace and Brent, recruited my husband to help with uh, the videography tonight. And of course, Candace, our framer extraordinaire, is also uh, the camera for our Instagram feed tonight. And so, Gus. And yeah, we have Gus here too. Get a shot of him. He's, you know, chaperoning. He's quite familiar with his body of work. He'll be audience member. Yeah. We'll take questions from him later. Exactly. Yeah. If you have questions for Gus, <laughs> put them online. Um, so this piece, whiskey, which we actually happened to include, you know, this interesting like, bit of deckles too, which we, was kind of a new thing we did with the show, just to kind of create more of an engaging experience for our viewers, but um, this piece is unique, and there's a number of things I want to talk or ask you to talk about, to have us talk about with this piece, because it's different from others in the show for a few reasons. One, it's more the warmer palette, so I want you to talk sure. about that. Maybe let's start there, talk okay. about the warmer palette. Um, well, it's called Whiskey, and uh, the meaning behind the painting as we'll sort of talk about what Avalon sort of means to me and, 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 and all that. Whiskey was uh, meant to, or it speaks to a crutch. Um, a, a crutch that maybe we have, we all had at different form or at different times of our lives that sometimes now we look back and we're just, you know, we're just like, oh my God, like I just remember a time where I was just drinking too much or I was doing, you know, like whatever great 
illegal substance or whatever it is that you was your crutch. Um, it speaks to that. I really want everyone to sort of just look at that crutch and just think, you know what, if you were going through something and there was a period of time you did some things that were, that you don't, uh, that you're not proud of, maybe that crutch, that time, uh, took you out of what you were doing to yourself in your brain. And right. so, um, this is called whiskey for a few reasons, because that's always a crutch for me. Um, I don't really call it a crutch anymore. I think right. I just call it a daily existence, but I, uh, it's an enjoyment I, now. I mean, right, what it was a crutch, but, um, so, but I, the, the, the whole term of whiskey, there's something about that coloring of the, of the liquid, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that those warm oranges and, and all those tones. Um, they, for me, bring you back into, I don't know, like my favorite season is fall. Everything about that is comforting, um, warm, and so I really wanted those to be the base coat under here so that they shine through, meaning uh, this dark, sort of the darker chocolate brown that I put over it um, is, is kind of how you want to view that crutch at a later date, but it's sort of, it's all just sort of coming through that it gave mm -hmm. you uh, those good times or those saving your life times, those, those types of things. Um, and so, and I, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, and I think, well, and I uh, thank you. Cause, I mean, I, I, I do love that it relates very much like the, you know, the dark brown to the whiskey and there is, um, you know, almost kind of like the light coming through a, uh, you know, a glass for sure. But I also, what I also really love about this painting is that it's been like kind of a free for all with the drawing on this one. Right. Whereas in some of the others that we'll see, and even the first one we saw, you know, the drawing, it's a bit, it seems it's maybe hard, a little, scratchy. Yeah, but it may, maybe a bit more calculated. Perhaps, this one yes. seems more automatic, like intuitive. You just went for it, right? Right. It's, case, it's, yes, 100%. Uh, I think the final result, uh, it was basically almost sort of one line sort of going through. I wanted it to be really sort of curvy. I wanted it to be really sort of organic. I didn't want those kind of hard edges, which um, the, the, the lines that when I'm scraping through is always something that is uh, showing you that I'm present or that I mean this, I'm right there, I'm with you. Right. Uh, I wanted these to be that, but also be continuous uh, and curvy and less, I, I don't want to say harsh, but um, the end result is a little bit like, yeah, I mean, when I stand back, there's, a, there's, this, there's this thing of like henna or something that ah, sort of goes okay. on there that uh, has this, I don't know, like a positive vibe. And I wanted underneath that, I wanted you to be able to see that color coming through. Um, I really want us to look at our crutches as uh, they, they did actually help us. And they right. did get us through times where we're like, oh man. Because um, I think that's important. I think it's important to look back and not have sort of uh, everything that we've done, everything, the good and the bad, all brought us to where we are right now. Mm -hmm. So right. I, no I think we need to look at it positively. And I hadn't thought about it before too, but of course, yeah, you're right. The line is really lyrical in this piece compared to some of the hard edge ones. Almost um, musical. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, it, it very much is. And I mean, we've had a lot of comment people coming through the show about this piece. And I think they are kind of attracted to it because it is a little different for those reasons. And, it's, yeah. and, it, and it is kind of like a big warm hug. Of a painting. Yeah, like whiskey does. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like beverages. <laughs> Sponsored by. No, just um, and, you know, I guess maybe we could talk a little bit, just, we should talk a little bit about the show title Avalon yeah. and where this body of work came from now, sooner than later, so that. Um, you want me to move? So that we can. Um, I'm like trying to figure out the direction here, but uh, so that we can, so that people have a bit, you know, people who didn't weren't at your artist talk, how am I I'm trying to spit this out? So people who weren't at your artist talk um, have a better understanding of where this body of art comes from. Right. Um, 
Okay, well, so what uh, Avalon is, is the story of me. The story of myself coming out. Mm -hmm. um, so sort of before and then after. Um, it's the story of uh, the feelings that I had, the situations I was in, the, um, the just my existence before realizing that it's okay to be me and right. gay. Right. Um, and uh, so I, I wanted to put that, I wanted to paint that series of like um, from when you are, you know, my earliest memories are like six where I sort of felt, no, I didn't feel anything. It's, it's too hard to describe in that sense, but I knew that things were different. Like, I can tell you that I loved the Hardy Boys, and I loved Parker Stevenson. I'm saying this live. So there was something, uh, like, I don't know if in my head I wanted to be Parker Stevenson, like one of the Hardy Boys, or, like, I have no idea. Right. But it was the first time that I sort of um, just knew something. And then, you know, you sort of grow and then you, those feelings either become stronger of things or you have, you start to have more realizations like, hmm, something's wrong here. Uh, those are terms from my brain then. There's nothing ever wrong, but, no, you know, it's just something in my head that is just like, I don't know, like, I gotta, you know, we gotta figure this out. So I sort of painted the series in kind of like a series of, or a sets of four, meaning different parts of you know, the journey. So like six, ages six to 12, there's there's a learning curve in there. From 12 until 22, there's another huge learning curve or lack of learning curve because you're really pushing that down, or I was. Um, 22 to 37, 37 is when I came out, um, and then 37 and beyond. So it's kind of like where it started, how I was feeling and how low I got, some acceptance and then into still hiding, but knowing that um, maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and then the tunnel, and then you just, and then it's living your best life. So where something like this would come into, it's kind of in that second part of the series and the third part of the series, okay. where just you ask, are, just ask me yeah, where you are, there's a crutch, there's things that you're not gonna talk about, there's things that you're not gonna share, um, you party too much, Whatever it is, whatever it is that, that sort of keeps you um, uh, grounded or in your safe place, right. that crutch um, was important because it helped, you know, sort of keep things well, like this until they, yeah, right. I mean, and it was it fine was until up to get right exactly until there was another part of the journey that I was going to have to face. Mm -hmm. So that crutch, um, well, I cherish it. Mm -hmm. I cherish whiskey. Well, and, and that's and I, lo I love that about it too. That instead of it being negative, you turn it into something really positive. It's right. it was you know this lateral move, which with the ladders, which we will get into. Um, ladders going across, ladders going up. These are it, I mean ladders have shown up. I noticed in his paintings now. Well, since I've known you, I guess the beginning more, of time. Yeah, the beginning of time. Um, but I, but I also want like, what I also was interested when we first started talking about the um, you know the theme for the show about um, you know it kind of chronicling your your coming out um, and that you know you're talking about that feeling of being different and how being different is not wrong it's just being different and what is different versus normal um, you know different is normal and how I thought kind of some of those themes really resonated with this time as well, right? When we're right. all trying to kind of sort out what, you know, I'm not going to say the term that everyone doesn't want me to say, but... The new normal? <laughs> I don't like that term. Either. I know, I, but, but, you know, in some regards, it really is. If For sure. We're figuring out what is normal, what is different, and accepting a lot of different and a lot yeah. of change. And so, I mean, I guess for me, this, um, this whole, like, even though it's so deeply personal, on the flip side of it, it's also extremely universal. Yes. You know, these feelings. So. Yeah. Uh, that, that was one thing that, um, that was important to me. You know, uh, I thought about this series three to four years ago, and I didn't have any courage to sort of paint oh, it. Oh, okay. I'm just going to turn off the heater. You can talk. I didn't really have the courage to paint it, so it was... Um, 
because I didn't want to paint Chris's geisha. I didn't want to paint something that was so specific, perhaps to me or um, uh, a portion of the public that anyone couldn't come in and and, and enjoy it, or well, they should be able to. But um, the thing is, is that when I was painting it, I was starting to realize that every topic or feeling or emotion or situation that I was touching on um, while painting was completely universal. There wasn't just like my whole high school and then the gay kid. Everyone had feelings of isolation, feelings of uh, like some pure joy, but feelings of whatever you were feeling, that, of darkness, of things that you were hiding, of things that you didn't really want to put out there. Right. You didn't have to be gay. It could have been absolutely anything. And I started to realize that all our journeys are similar. Um, we all have had, you know, like we've all had ups and downs. Mm -hmm. We've all had some trauma, however that uh, sort of came to you. And so I, I began to be really sort of comfortable with painting. Um, not to say that at all that, you know, that I was scared about painting my story, but I liked that, I started to realize it was one more thing that sort of uh, told me that we are all alike. We are all right. Uh, right. the same, different journeys, but we're all, yeah. we're all human. So that, yeah. that was important yeah. to me. It was a, sure. an important discovery. Um, did I finish talking about the story or, of Avalon? So, yeah. I mean, you got more into the, where it was personally, but I mean, right. historically, like the term Avalon is being this, oh. this well, paradise. This right, so Avalon itself was, um, I love Roxy music, and one of my favorite songs of all time was Avalon. I, I didn't even know what it meant. I was just, you know, you just sing along to it. And so I looked it up one day, and, it, and, it, and, and in the time of, or mythical time of Camelot and all these different things, a Avalon was a place of healing, a place where it was kind of a paradise, it was an island of like fruits and birds and self-sustaining and, and all these different things. It literally was a, a, a place of paradise. Um, and so what was really cool about that is once I sort of, you know, got that. I, I, I thought to an old story from my past when I ran a restaurant in downtown Calgary. And we had regular customers, like everyday regular customers. And everybody liked me, even though I was the grumpy, you know, right. or the, the mean <laughs> waiter. Um, Which I still kind of have a hard time. Well, I kind of get, you're like the treat of me and keep them keen, but like, ha ha. Like, yeah. Well, I can say anything and everyone exactly. would just go, oh, like, so funny. I'm like, I know, I totally meant that. And then you walk away, but whatever. Um, I had uh, just some regular customers that were, as people, were just, they were really great, but they had, um, they were of a certain um, uh, religion that was very clear on their thoughts of, of many things, including gay people. Um, and so I would all, you know, like you always sort of, you know, you're listening to that and then they're getting your opinion on things and, you know, you'd be standing there listening to the most atrocious things. Um, at one point, uh, one of the people, one of the regulars had said, like, they need all, you know, F word people to be on an island so they can kill each other, you know, like right. with AIDS right. and all this stuff. Just uh, a repulsive, ignorant attitude of just lack of education and it was just gross. Mm -hmm. And so I never said anything because I wasn't out. And so I've looked back and sometimes I, you know, I have felt. You know, like, oh, you should have said something, but it, it, it's hard to explain, but it wasn't the time. It, it, it wasn't going to be the time. It wasn't going to be the right time. It was just something that I was just going to have to listen to. I never stood there and said, yeah, that's totally cool. I agree, man. I would just, you know, I would say a few things like, you guys are gross, and then walk away, and then they would think that was funny. <laughs> so, uh, but through the years, I've always thought about that story, and then once the Avalon, the, the meaning sort of came up that I read about, I was like, this is it. Like, Avalon is that place of paradise and healing that we're, you know, my community is all supposed to go and die. Um, but it's that place where, I think it becomes universal because it's that place where you find your community. Mm -hmm. uh, you find your like-minded individuals. You find 
Um, everything that you connect with is there. So right. uh, it is your own paradise. It is your own sense of uh, of being. And so it's a it's a long sort of weird way to get to that title, but it really worked for me. Well, it, and I think it does really work. I mean, it and again with with this like kind of you know time right now as well and that whole idea i mean i'm not even getting into the politics going wrong all around right now but i think a lot of people would easily pack up and move to a paradise island right now 100 right? just be like okay i'm done like i'll even give up my social media if i can just <laughs> yeah right you know be in a place where um, yeah, I'm kind of just surrounded by love and acceptance instead of hate, right? Like right. this is again very topical to kind of what's going on in the world exactly. now. Exactly, one hundred percent. Yeah. Black Lives Matter, and yeah, like just everything. So, so, um, so, thank you for explaining that because I think that um, you know that tie-in. Yes, it's it's a, again a personal story, but has you know these connotations that I think anybody who comes to see the show can really can really relate, relate to. to. Yeah. Um, all right, so this beauty has a new home, so we won't spend a lot of time on it, um, other than I do particularly, I, I knew this one would find a home because of the color, the composition, um, yeah, just everything about it. Like, there's an effortless kind of application of paint and, you know, the way you're layering color here. It's just, it's effortless. Well, um, uh, thanks. Uh, this one's called uh, Overwhelmed by the Ocean's Shapeless Form. Of course the title comes from a song from me. Um, it, 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 it is it, within that second sort of period of time, like, like 12 to 22, where um, it was just, it, you, you, you're sort of sitting back and um, everything's overwhelming because every thought or decision or thing that you hide just sort of in your brain you just build it up so much bigger until it's just literally like a mess around your head. Mm -hmm. And you feel like you're, I don't know, like kind of drowning. You're just kind of out there alone. Right. And you're just kind of treading. And all the stuff's going around you that, um, that you can't sort of control. Um, one of them being your own mind. If, if, you know, like right. your own opinions of what you are and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, okay. that's, it's a fun one. that's that one. Okay, we're going to move into the other gallery now. Oops, sorry, guys. Yes, uh, this... Maybe talk a little bit about that, too. Yeah, um, well, in terms of titles, and, it, you know, like, I am a huge music person. I'm, like, the biggest music person who doesn't actually play an instrument. <laughs> so, music has somewhat uh, always been, My whole life has been uh, an escape. So, I get a lot of, uh, uh, like, sort of creative um, juices, or it just starts sort of the flow for me with painting or with absolutely anything. Um, and so, uh, you know, through the years, like you just hear a song and the line doesn't have to mean what, if the line stands out to me, it doesn't have to mean what that song means. It'll, it'll give it its own, it'll give its right. own meaning to me, which becomes so important. So I had this written down for a long time and uh, uh, belly full of honey, pocket full of pills, just totally, works in perfectly sort of in that third stage where uh you know like i've sort of learned you know i'm a master at covering i'm a master at there's never going to be any questions about like so tell me about yourself like right. i uh i was a master at like you know that's not really going to happen i was never really faking anything uh but i was uh, uh i was just i was just hiding mm -hmm. so if I just sort of keep things sort of on the, this level, um, uh, you know, in terms of a little bit superficial, if you just keep things at like funny, all that stuff, you know, it keeps everybody sort of right here. Right. Uh, and then the minute that, you know, like 
someone wants to ask something or assume something or or uh, bring you into a situation where you're going to have to be vulnerable, um, that's where the pocket full of pills comes. It's just kind of like, what? I'm out of here. So, okay, see you guys later. Right. Um, right. And so it, it had been in my life as deep as pocket full of pills. Um, at different times, you know, that, uh, um, that you're, uh, you know, you're hiding so deeply. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it is, it, it's speaking to uh, a period of time where you were just kind of like, you're just coasting. You're like, okay, so if we just sort of stay like this for a little while, all's going to be okay. Right. I'll deal with that stuff later. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. One thing I do want to say about a few of these ones that we've looked at, I actually had uh, boards made thicker, so it's three inches deep instead of you know your basic uh, inch and a half or inch and three quarter. So this depth um, in some of these paintings was really important to me um, to have this greater uh, sort of feel or this greater scale jumping off the wall because there was an importance to what I was painting for myself. So I wanted, I'm not going to say certain ones in particular, but I wanted uh, some of these to just have a bigger impact. Now, I love right. that too. I, I enjoy the fact that they are more, you know, kind of like a relief sculpture uh, and with their depth. It is, it is dramatic, you know, it's noticeable. Right. Yeah. Um, but they're kind of very much um, coming off the wall, like you said, in right. kind of a more traditional uh, uh, way. Um, so, you know, from that perspective, like, they really, I mean, they may need frame, but they would, really wouldn't need framing, so we're <laughs> I'll live, I'll live. <laughs> um, but they wouldn't need it because, they, you know, they have kind of a lot of weight on the wall, like, even being um, predominantly kind of uh, with a white layer over top, it still has a lot of impact because of that. And again, you see another one of the self-portraits here. Um, yeah, so that, the self-portrait in this um, was, I, I, I guess I'm going to say equally as important as the first one was sort of when I was drawing it. Once I was finished, we actually, well, uh, you guys came over mm -hmm. for uh, a studio visit. You guys both, like, you guys were sort of into what I was doing. You did make the comment that this one is just really in your face as compared to the other one. Um, I thought about that for a long time because that's not what I wanted to happen. I didn't want the main focus to be me in this. I wanted to sort of show, um, like I was already hiding. So like when you're hiding behind that coasting, mm -hmm. um, I'm not the center of this. And so right. um, in this show, I, I started to use a few different things like spray paint. So there's some spray paint mm -hmm. and there's some, uh, I, I watered down some paint so I could sort of get rid of the face a little bit. I wanted you to see it, but I wanted it to be, this kind of thing that's sort of behind. It's behind that, oh, I hate to say, behind the lie. I don't like putting that word in with my life, but it was, I guess, I wasn't saying anything, so I guess it was a lie. I, I needed that to be sort of hidden. I wanted you to really know that um, I was secondary sort of to this, to this journey because I was wanting to step back and just sort of, you know, go on. Unless you said something, then I was out of there. Right. Which well, I'd still be going, so actually, yeah, it, that works. <laughs> you know, and I think it, it ended up being very successful. I mean, I love all of these pops of intense color that are coming out again of the, this kind of predominantly white um, top coat, but also, I don't want to step on Gigi here, but, you know, even just the scraping, right? Like, this is really luscious. Was that your finger? Did you use your finger? Or was that uh, some kind of tool? No, that was a tool. That okay. was a tool. Okay. I used a, uh, well, some of this was actually from a comb, if you can believe it. Oh. This was actually from uh, just this weird shaped uh, sort of palette knife that I just dug in and I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. Um, because below my face, I really wanted you to see that there was, there's all these things that are going on under there. Right. All that stuff is in my brain, but I'm not letting... I'm not letting anybody know. I'm just going to sort of keep mm -hmm. coasting. So, yeah, well, whatever, that was my favorite part of the painting. Accidental tool it was. It, I, I love the effect of it too, that there are these like scratchy parts. So that one's just a little bit more fluid. I like yeah. that, you know, about it. 
Um, and of course, I mean, we haven't really talked about the ladders yet, but you know, once you see them, you can't kind of unsee them, but we have, you know, one in here, although this one doesn't have any ladders, this one has like, oh, and oh, that was another thing that somebody pointed out, and I, just the other day, um, I don't know, Bob, if you're um, uh, watching today, but Bob Pierce was in, and he mentioned the zigzags, too, as another. Yeah. So, I mean, we talked about, the, we've talked about the zigzags because there is some about the zigzag here, and then you'll see that again in some of the other paintings. Well, the zigzags, to me, always sort of um, represent a sense of being, a sense of... Um, you know, I don't know how to describe it. King of your own castle kind of thing. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a confidence within that within that zigzag that just sort of said, you know, like um, this is where I'm at. I guess it's kind of like I'm confident at that. Um, so to me, that zigzag is always representing some type of self awareness. Oh, okay. Um, so your visual language like fascinates me, right? <laughs> like it's no, it is. It's very fascinating. So, you know, uh, this one in particular, this was the first one that I painted for the show. Um, so it's another sort of one of those transition pieces where I'm sort of getting my footing. I did want it to be simple. I did want it to have sort of not too much going on. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I wanted, uh, like, of course, I picked a really sort of sophisticated sort of fun green as opposed to like, you know, Crayola crayon green, but I, I this is sort of from that first phase from, you know, like 6 uh, to 12 kind of thing. And it's called uh, All There Is and Ever Was. And it, it, it speaks to, I didn't know anything else. I only knew exactly, well, I didn't know what I was feeling, but I knew that, well, this is all there is. Like, right, you know? right. There's so this wasn't going to be like this complicated painting with all these different sort of parts that were... Um, showing sort of different sort of aspects of my thoughts because my thoughts were not sophisticated. They were like, I thought about coloring and whatever else you do between mm -hmm. 6 and 12. I think right. I did more than color, but whatever. Um, no, so there's, there's, there's a simplicity yeah. to this. I wanted it to be kind of playful, but, uh, you know, like all there is and ever was kind of just like, I, you don't know who you are in those times, but you don't know who you don't are. What you, wow, a little bit of wine. I gotta say, who uh, is. <laughs> yeah, it, you don't know who you are not, I guess. Right. It's, it's sort of hard to explain that. I, you know, I didn't think that I was the worst person on earth. Like, I was just like, well, I'm just, you know, you're, you don't know it, but you're just sort of coasting. But yeah. you, you really are coming into these thoughts that are then going to confuse you. This is kind of meant to be that little bit before where you're just like, well, yeah, it's like pre-adolescence. So like yeah, exactly. you ride your bike and right, totally. And it is it is a very beautiful chartreuse. Mm -hmm. Is that? It is. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if that reads well, but again, you have to just come in you and see the color exactly. Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess we can speak about this little one on this wall too, because it again is a little different. It has like similar to whiskey. Yeah. It has more of the warmer tones. Yeah. I know Gus is just having a nap here. And that's awesome. Uh, this one is called, uh, this is kind of from the, the fourth series a little bit. Um, waiting for my real life to begin. That of course comes from a song by Colin Hay. It's a song that I absolutely love. And it really speaks to their, um, there is a time where you know, you've accepted who you are, you know who you are, you've had fantasies at different times all your life of like, oh wow, like, I can do this, I could maybe one day do this, and that speaks to everybody. Right. That, you know, like mine just happened to have a backstory of, you know, at one time, you know, like you can't imagine getting married and you didn't want to, you didn't want to have kids, like all that's weird, like, you know, like, a long, long time ago. Right. You know, right. in your brain, you're just like, I can't do anything that a normal person could. Right. So, right. Uh, so you built up fantasies that, you know, if there was a time or if there was a place where I could actually just fully be me and live my life, um, I'm going to, you know, like, let's, let's hold on to that thought and, and see where that goes. Mm -hmm. So waiting for my real life to begin even sort of went into the 
the sort of the final phase after you're out because now you're like, okay, so the hardest thing is over. I told okay. everybody, I think I'm awesome. But um, even though the weight's off your shoulders, you're still like, okay, so now I have to navigate how to get those fantasies or, you know, like how to go forward. And so waiting for my real life to begin is, I think it's, I think it could be real for anyone. And it, even when you're finishing university, right. you've done all right. this. Now you're just at the start of, you know, your first job that is into that career that yes. you're forward. You're just sort of waiting. You're like, okay, so where's this going to go? Like, how am I going to navigate this? So it, it sort of speaks to everybody in that way. Yeah. Well, and this is one thing I guess I haven't really talked to you about because you really gave uh, me carte blanche to install the show however I wanted. Right. Were you surprised by any of the decisions I made? I know you weren't particular. Like you had, like you, you're saying you set them up in to these different times. I painted right? them in. That was really only for my uh, uh, to keep my journey, my painting journey organized, so I didn't miss out on something, so that gotcha. I could look back while I was painting and go, this went to this, and then it went to this, uh, but. Uh, with anything creative, with anything art, I, you know, like I just think that having another person, because you can sort of be in your own bubble, uh, having another person take this for um, a different side to it. So without the meaning behind, colors that go together, lines that go together, um, sizing, all that stuff, uh, I was super excited that this would now have a new vision right. for me to walk around and, and look at. Um, so well, and I knew you were easy going, but oh yeah, it's like whatever you want to do. Like you're the professional. Yeah, because yeah. it was, um, you know, because there is, of course, there's all the layers that go into painting the show, but yeah. then there is that whole other element of of curating the show too, so that you can create, you know, a visual story that yeah. makes sense, right? And yeah. some painting, like whiskey, as we looked at earlier really didn't play nice with some of the other painting. Like, being dark and heavy. There's um, a strong feel it, to it, that. Exactly, that, yeah, yeah. and lar it's the largest piece in the show. Um, you know, it was that, that um, ha having that blue, the overwhelmed by the ocean shape was, was really the only combination that right. I felt was like, did both of them justice? Yeah. Where it wasn't like swallowing another one whole, but where, you know, with um, you know the brightness of another one wasn't you know too stark and strange, but um, right. no, I'm glad you liked right. it because it was because that was that that was fun too because I know you're so kind of easygoing about it. Um, it was fun to kind of create yeah these these narratives. Well, it was exciting for me because it, then everything became new again. This stuff was sitting around my house for a long time right. in, in my garage. So every time you walk by it, and actually a few of them I re had really retouched. Or almost, um, almost redid to a certain extent. Well, because every time you walk in the garage, yeah, let's move in because this right. was one on this, totally. back or, this back wall. Every time I would walk in my house, uh, and, you know, from doing anything, you, I'm walking through my garage, and I've got them all leaning in different places. Yeah. And you know, like, you know, okay. like you walk by and you're just like, oh yeah, like whatever. And then you you walk by one, and you're like, oh, okay. This and one, then I would always have to stop and look at it and go, does this really say, like, is this, is this me? Is this what I was meaning to say? Am I getting the point across? And it didn't matter getting the point across to you or you or you. It was me. Like, what right. do I, can I stand behind what I really actually thought that I was doing in the first time? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. But there were elements of it that just... Hit me, and uh, so this was there was about two or three in here, and then I sort of landed on the exact emotion for me that I felt that it was okay to present this. Well, and this one, I mean, people again wouldn't know this, but um, I did do a studio visit with Chris. Um, what was it like a month out from the show? It wasn't that yeah. far, but yeah, it was like it was the third week in September, maybe. Yes, yeah, so it wasn't that long before yeah. the show was out. It wasn't like, you know, back in, you know, July or anything, but, so yeah, we're talking in September we came, and this painting, I mean, I can see some of the elements, but it's really a, a different it's painting. It's a different painting, yeah. And I sure. love what you did with it, because initially it was, 
A dark painting. It was dark, so it, it felt heavy, and it felt negative, and it's got a title that you can sort of take it either way that you want. Mm -hmm. But um, it was dark. It, it, it wasn't <clears throat> the meaning behind it, which is, so if you like it, let it kill you, which is, a, which is an amazing line from a song by Emily Coppola that I've loved for years and years and years. Um, and it kind of speaks to, there's a certain point in anyone's life or with anyone's situation of something that they're going through. Mine, of course, specifically was kind of coming out where you're just like, you're just tired. There just ends up being a day where you're just like, oh my God, like, I don't care anymore. And I'm not talking about giving up. I'm just like, I don't care. Like, I don't care if I'm shot in the streets or beheaded <laughs> or whatever. I don't care if someone's going to punch me when they see me. It's more like, I'm going to just live. Yeah, it's, like, it's kind of like a ground zero. It's yeah. just kind of like, I'm done. Whatever. Hang me if you want. I have no energy to continue um, hiding or not even that. I have no energy to continue my inner thoughts that say, hmm. So it was kind of like that. And, and, and that was, that still is what the painting was about from the very beginning. I painted it in this sort of dark way that perhaps might have uh, uh, signaled a little bit of uh, a fight or uh, an anger. And it really wasn't. It was, it, it was, it was really like, ugh. Whatevs. I accept whatever's going to happen to me because, you know, I am happy, I am human. This is just how the story is going to continue to go. And so it was dark, and now it's light, but I kept some of these elements that were speaking to me through that. Yeah, which I'm and glad you did. I mean, especially these bops, bops, um, <laughs> bits of blue. Yeah, bits of blue. Well, now it's called Bop, um, a blue. But with, the, with this rust color, right, like, and that peeks through it, I'm going to now just get into, um, like, for me, what excites me, like, from, like uh, from a formalist kind of evaluation of abstract painting. Okay. Um, like, these little, again, it's going to be hard to see. Come visit the show. Um, but There's these, a lot of sort of texture. Yeah, but again, different texture than I've ever seen in your work before. Not just like scratchy, but like these kind of, I don't know, it's like smeared, like how it, shaped forms smeared. And the, and again, like it's a different kind of drawing shapes, these different forms that have emerged. You know, this like gray with this spray paint. Like there's this, I don't know, the balance of it is kind of like, Perfection. Um, there you go. Perfection. Thank you. But no, I well, I really love this painting. Like, if you know, if I actually had a wall that was bigger than two feet, like this one would almost have to come home with me. But um, it's just not feasible. This would right. be. I could make a wall out of this. Um, well, we'll have to do it right now. Right. Add exactly. Whole, right, exactly. Add a whole gallery of my stuff on your house. I think that's awesome. With interior design, yeah. Can you help us out with that? Perfect. Um, thank you very much for all that. You know, like, this is one painting that, you know, there's always paintings within, I think any artist would, you know, when you put that out there and then you just sort of look back and you just think, oh, well, that doesn't sell, like, I'm going to keep that. Mm -hmm. This is one of those paintings oh, for me okay, because okay. it really does, uh, to me now in my brain, it just, it, it's so clear of, to, um, that meaning of, um, you know, like, I'm ready, whatever, let's just go. And uh, I, I like how this turned out. I, I like the lightness. Before it was too dark, and this lightness sort of brings us into this really heartwarming thing where um, it, it's like you become the underdog, maybe? You know, like, it's just like, oh, like, go forward. Like, let's mm -hmm. see where this goes. So. This was really important to me. That's why when we were sort of talking about whiskey and this one, yeah. and I, I, this title to me just, Listen you know what, this is art in itself. I yeah. love that. I mean, I think that speaks to true passion. If you like it, well then let it kill you. Yeah. Just do it. Because when you're 80 years old or 90 or hopefully 102 on your deathbed and you look back, and 
You know, the things that you uh, didn't do. I mean, who wants to have those regrets? Who wants yeah. that? So. Well, as a side note too, this was the only kind of switch that we did together mm -hmm. um, in the shows because we'd actually had this, this painting one. here. Yep. Um, but you had wanted this one, and, and actually in retrospect, like it, it was beautiful. Like, sorry, you're also a beautiful painting, <laughs> but you know, it's always paint. For me, it's also picking because it's like coming around corners in the gallery, and, and this is more um, of a grand gesture when you're like walking to kind of bring you in, and then right. when you turn around and see this one, yeah, there is kind of uh, just a great feeling about it. Like soft. Awesome, yeah. yeah. Like it's kind of hard and soft at the same time. Uh, I love it. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> um, and I guess, Maybe we should say a few words about this one because I also, you know, like this one has had a lot of comments as well because, again, it's this different shape, this, you know, like comb, I guess I call it. I don't know. Is it a For comb? Sure. Okay. It's not a comb, but you can okay. call it a comb. It's <laughs> abstract, so it is going to be whatever it is going to right, be for you. Fair enough. Okay. Um, this one is called HC, uh, and then uh, what the truth feels like. So this was a really important um, painting to me. This one speaks to, uh, you know, like I was out, and that first love that you have, that all of a sudden you don't have to A, hide it, B, it's reciprocated, because, you know, when you're in the, you know, when you're in the closet or when you're covered up, you can't, you never really express that. Right. All of a sudden, I was now in the position where I could express it, and the person loved me back. Like it was right. real. Right. Um, so it kind of speaks to a few things. So this, uh, you you can't see it from afar, but it is a dark. We're gonna call it a comb, uh, which is, is is to represent clothes. So at one point, I was closed. I couldn't have any of that. Uh, so why okay. even bother? The light part, which we'll call it a comb, um, is just it is just showing being open. I'm now open to everything that I can have, and I really I taped this off and I just did one form of red. I wanted that to be there because um, at, you know at different parts of your life, and it doesn't even have to be a gay thing. At different parts of your life, you think that you can't have something. You think that you'll never succeed at something. You'll you'll never have this. So you create this sort of uh, fantasy of everything's just perfect or whatever. So I wanted that to be all like nice and straight edge. It's this love that's like in a wrapped box that uh, okay. I'm never gonna have because it's not right or whatever. Um, I found it um, and it, well, it changed me. It was sort of, uh, it didn't last, <laughs> which, you know, that's, that's totally fine. Um, it didn't last, uh, but I will say that the, I still have that love. I will always, right. because this was the first one, this was the most important thing in your life, sort of, at the time. And maybe even still, because it is what opened you up. So coming out was one thing, and then recognizing love, recognizing another person, recognizing that someone can feel something about you that you never felt would be possible. Um, that's super, like, that's, that's like the Titanic. Well, it was the Titanic, but it, 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 it really, you know, it really is super important. It, it's this big thing in your life. Um, and so the HC is the person. Um, he lives in Vancouver. We still talk. Which is great. Uh, yeah, for sure. And the, what the truth feels like is, well, this is what it is. This is what I fantasized about. This is what I never thought would happen. Mm -hmm. So there's parts of me that keeps it in a just perfectly wrapped little, you know, mm -hmm. like jewel box because it was perfection. Um, but then it just became real. Like it became real and it became dirty and it became messed up and, and all those things. But uh, it is just, it's a staple. It's, it's part of who you are today, well, who I am today. And I mean, I, I, yeah, I find this painting, yeah, quite, I guess, very p positive as well. There is something, and maybe it is because the, the white 
is kind right. of pointing up, yeah. whereas like darkness is on the bottom. Um, but the way and you, and and I guess I thought of it as a cone because you kind of get tangled in it. Like I feel like things. Actually, are yeah, I, I, I like that. I have no problem in calling that a cone, like because when you take a physical <laughs> cone, it's either down, which seems closed, yeah. or it's up. So this is what that is exactly what this is. This is closed. Yeah. This is where I was before. This is where yeah, uh, I became. And so I was I was going to be accepting all those things for myself. And I and we got like it's, yeah, again some of this this drawing and like you know, amazing drawing. I mean, got the chevron again, which now I understand like the zigzag chevron. Um, so yeah, let's move on because we're running out of time. Oh, almost at five. I could, I could chat a lot. Sorry. I know. I'll get you a bit of wine, and then we'll kind of. Can we just come? I know. We should come in here. I'm just gonna grab us a little bit more wine, and then we'll kind of wrap this up in the next five minutes. Love standing and look really good. Um, what I want. So this, yeah, this beauty has sold as well. This bright yellow painting, which we're so. Toast it to its new home. Um, I really want to talk about um, this painting on this wall because, again, I think not unlike, um, you know, if you like it, let it kill you, this is really, you know, quite an outstanding piece of the show um, in seeing, yeah, and just seeing all the kind of development and sophistication of like the mark making come to right. come to a head. Um, and this is set up at a trip day almost, right? So basically, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the, the title as well. So I'm gonna put the wine down and you can get started. So the title is Skin That's Too Tough. Um, Hiding Behind Skin That's Too Tough. This kind of uh, works into like a couple different places like sort of in phase two and phase three. Um, when you've got something to hide, or when you're not being authentic, when you're not being fully who you are, um, you're kind of in hiding. And so, also, with that, you have to, with many, not just being gay, um, with anything in life, you have to grow some pretty tough skin sometimes. Um, of course, through my whole life, with the way that I was raised, um, you know, through my parents and sort of family life, there was already a thick skin sort of being um, uh, sort of developed so I could sort of just, you know, hide and retreat. Uh, I wanted this to be a painting where, if you were here, or you can see this, um, this is on board, which mostly everything's on board, I'll just do that. He's allowed and, to do that, even yeah. though I'm friends. <laughs> So this is actually sort of, uh, I sort of stained this with some blue and I just scraped this off and I scraped right. and I scraped I and I scraped because I wanted this to be that truest form of, this could be anyone. This is you at, you know, like the sort of x-ray or the, the, the okay. your soul, like this is your core. This is what all your tough skin is hiding. So I wanted different layers sort of what you might say different situations but different um different parts of your life that grew a thicker skin and a thicker skin and a thicker skin um and so all of this thick skin all of these situations all of um that th thick skin that you've grown over with experience with situations you really are this guy girl person human. underneath human you are really this underneath. Um, we all look like this. This is absolutely everybody. This was sort of my thick skin, my story, my um, okay, okay. feelings. Well, and there is a thickness to it, right? Like you can see, um, you know, just in the painting, like the brush mark, like there, it, it's thick. It really is thick, but in a beautiful way, right? Like the, um, just, like the chalkiness, I guess, of the colors. I really like in this one too. I mean, some of them have a bit, a bit more of like a gloss or a little bit of a sheen in them, right. some more than others. But yeah, this one is like almost super matte, and I love that about it. It's like icing. 
Well, I think when yeah. things are mapped, I don't know. Uh, uh, I connect sort of map with um, real. <laughs> so it's not glossy. It's not a Kardashian. Oh, okay. It's not shiny. Right, exactly. It's uh, the belly. map sort of feels like just real and gritty. Right. And this is another painting as the other one that sort of had a different sort of beginning. And, you know, it always had this part, but this sort of area was plainer. It only had a sort of a few things on there, and, uh, and I liked what I had done because I liked that thickness. Um, but that thickness, in the end, was only representing the, the tough skin that I talk about. Mm -hmm. but the tough skin was developed from different situations and different periods of your life that you, you know, that was kind of fight or flight. Um, and so layering on with more paint, going over that initial thickness of the paint, mm -hmm. and then scraping off at different points, uh, I wanted to create, there was, a, there was a series of situations of thought processes of traumatic things, of good things, whatever. There was a series of things that allowed your skin to grow another layer, and another layer, and another layer to hide right, right. what we all are. So, and, you know, again, with all the paintings, um, you could say like, well, it's super gay because that's exactly what happened to me. But it's like for literally everybody because everyone's had their periods of time where uh, they had to grow thicker skin. And you you grow as a person um, out, of, out of situations. You don't really grow from like super happiness. Well, no, you grow from yeah. perhaps down points, perhaps, you know. Like, it's a learning. Right. Through right. Learning. You learn most from that, so you sort of learn from that thickening of skin that you know better for next time or whichever. Which isn't, I'm not saying that that's always the healthiest. The thicker skin is really great, but literally the, the person that you are is still under here. Right. So, yeah. you know, like you grow up that thickness, you grow that thickness of skin through life. But then as you mature and as you understand things, you have to also shed some of that skin. Because then you get into a situation where you're 51 and you're single and blah, blah, blah. Like all those right. things. You have to then, you know, like once you're secure, uh, once you're living your best life, once you are authentic, you start to shed some of that skin because the vulnerability within anyone is what is real, is what is attractive, is... I'm not talking about hooking up or right. I'm not talking like like yeah. the, the whole end of life is to find that your partner, but um, just being a real person has toughness, vulnerability, softness, all those things as as a person. Mm -hmm. So as you grow older and as you you know, like as you Yeah, it's uh, like you need to need to find You shed out. some of that. Yeah, because <laughs> you literally are getting back to this. Yeah. Um, you need yeah, you need to kind of for sure, right. 100%. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I've no, always right. talked for an hour about that and I didn't mean to. Well, no, I mean, I think it's good to also, I mean, anybody who knows your work um, knows that there is a lot of meaning in every single painting, every single title. Like none of it, you know, you're never going to ever be one who's like untitled XBII. And, no. and thank you for that. But, uh, but I appreciate it too because there is again like there's you know there's a different layer. It's like you can look at it and see if you're looking at it from just like a I enjoy abstract painting and enjoy um, color, you know color whatever. and form. There's an in that way, but then there are these well these other layers. Deeper messages it's, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. these different layers. Like there's these other places that you're pulling in these from that kind of wrap it and hold you know make it whole. So, um, so thanks for that. I really appreciate you sharing it because, um, you know, although I knew that about s s the stories with some of them, I'm glad we were able to spend a little bit more time and have a little bit more of an in-depth conversation about it. Uh, that said, we probably should wrap it up right now. Um, thank you for everyone hanging in there. Um, and watching. I should say hanging in there, but you know what I mean. We're five minutes past. I talk a lot, so I'm sorry. Pour another glass of wine. Um, but thank you for joining us. Uh, a quick note too, just to reiterate, reiterate that Chris will be at the gallery from two to four on Saturdays 
um, for you know artist meet and greet. He'll take you through the show as well. Um, Till the end of so there's probably four Saturdays. I think there's like four. It's all of them in November and then the first one in December uh, when the show ends. So please come on down. Again, it's a maximum of 15 people at this point. Um, but that shouldn't be a problem either. Like we can. And certainly, we're happy to accommodate you for private viewings as well. Uh, we just love to have you come down and check out the show and meet the ever first of all, Chris Kuzmanovich. We will have his very amazing um, soundtrack to the show also um, playing Play. in the background, yeah. uh, which I think is great for his music. If you didn't catch our first live stream, we did. I had Chris share a lot of his musical inspirations. Um, I think that is another fascinating element to the work. Um, so yeah, you can always, if you haven't seen that one, you can check that out to hear uh, about some of Chris's, some of the music that Chris listens to. Well, I think I, I actually have a Spotify playlist. Oh, there you go. There you um, go. That you can find. I'm 51, so I don't know how to find it. I just know that I made it. Right, right. Um, that was everything that I was listening to, the show, everything that sort of gave me this vibe to continue so yeah. yeah but all to say um yeah we'd love to have you come down and chat with like meet and greet with both chris and i um and gus. Have some snacks yeah meet gus and gallery pubs are usually here as well um so thanks again everybody um thanks again to you know our framer extraordinaire candace who um, is on our Instagram camera tonight, and thank you to my husband Brent for being our Facebook videographer. Um, we look forward to you know hearing any hearing from you if you have any questions about the show. Thanks so much, and have a great weekend. Thanks.